So I'm at Ya yeah Field Trip and uh, I did my talk yesterday at around 5 o'clock. Seemed like it went pretty well. I'm here with uh, two friends who have some feedback around their experience. So what are your names? I'm Anna. And I'm Nick. I'm a coach. So a I life coach, right? Women. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah I'm a writer. I am a branding strategist. How long have you been together? A uh, year and a <laughs> half. And we got yes. married this summer. And you got married this summer. Yeah. Awesome. And we have awesome. five kids together. Yeah. Or in our family, we have five kids. Crazy time. So you you came to my my training. So what did you think? It was good times. It was amazing. Yeah. When you were saying how so much of new age stuff is from like here up, I totally agree. And I realized that this whole weekend I've been like here up. I've been all up in my head, and it felt so good to like find my body again. Yeah. Oh. So Carly, um, tell me for you what was the most impactful uh, part of the talk that you heard today? Seeing you and your partner actually demonstrate how you communicate before you engage in intimacy. I've never even considered that before. And to not only under, like, have a better understanding, but then also have an example that I can then take home and actually implement into practice, or actually start a practice based on that. Having a skill that I can take away to help improve myself and my partnership and my life that is, for me, by far the most impactful. My name is Aga. Hi, Aga. And Hi. are you an artist? Yes, I'm a photographer and a filmmaker. I liked how you mix in sexuality and spirituality and also uh, a little bit of science so to be more mindful and set intentions. I think that was like the biggest takeaway. And what is your name? Jan Paul. Nice to meet you. <laughs> your passion made your message digestible but then it was grounded in so much research and so much experience that it also made you trustworthy. And then you let us peek behind the curtain and we're present and let us see into the inner workings, which that vulnerability made us also be like, all right, he's real like us. And I can feel this. Hello friends, and what are your names? Amanda. And? Scott. We've been together for 14 years. And children? Yeah, two kids. Eight and ten. Yeah. I'm a photographer. And I'm a, a photographer as well as a painter and illustrator. For me, the biggest takeaway from the talk was certainly around the idea of like the healthiness and holistic approach of bringing your life-giving energy up into the rest of your body, the practices around that. It resonated with me where I realized that, you know, having all those things in balance and having that flow is definitely where I feel the most invigorated and alive and creative. Mine is much shorter. <laughs> it's uh, the power of movement. So what's your name? Mike Millet. Yeah, and just talking about how uh, Something as simple as uh, uh, breath when it comes to sex, how much that can increase uh, just the pleasure and the intimacy of it. Um, I never really thought about it, so I thought that was really cool. Becky, Earl. Hi, Becky. Hi. I couldn't get a full read on you before I had gone to your class, and then as soon as you started, I got a sense of... Um, trust and uh, in what you were delivering and I thought you did an amazing job. And I'm here with Jen. Jen. I really loved seeing um, what you did with your partner and just sitting there and like experiencing that and I really want to do that with my partner and desires, fears and boundaries. Yes. Yeah. That felt really deep and profound and fantastic and I want to do that. So what's your name? Elizabeth. Hi Elizabeth. Hi. Nice to meet you. I'm a creative director, okay. so I do a lot of photography and photo shoots. I loved learning more about the wounded feminine and the unhealthy masculine. Unhealthy masculine. Yeah, I really like that. When I'm in a place of source, instead of taking on the wounded feminine, I'm so much more able to like get my energy like just manifest what I want and just like let my children, because I have mm -hmm. children, yes. know like that I'm here and present with them and just being present. Yeah, mm. all the different ways I've learned to be present, but this was like a nice new 
take on it. I like those ideas about the breath, yeah. the feminine breath, which is, I'm trying to remember if it's breathing in open mouth and then out the nose. Yes, yeah. right. And the, and the man is into the heart. In through the heart. Yes. That's opposite. Yeah. I like those breaths. Those are cool. So Emily, thank you for taking the time to um, answer a couple questions. There was a lot of message. There was a lot of layers about this connection. I, what I especially took, like the lower chakras and the upper chakras and how a flow between um, those uh, might feel or look. Um, also how an expression of just working from the upper or just the lower might feel or look. And I, could, I related to all of those but definitely interested in this full flow. I definitely connected to both the message, but also the feeling. Hi, I'm Jason Lee Siegel. I'm from San Diego, California. I'm here at Field Trip with Frank. We're here learning about sex. I think the thing that I found most impactful was this idea that, that sex can be another form of reaching closer to God that might be easier than meditation. I've been practicing meditation for several years, and it's very hard, it's very difficult. And like I want to continue on that path, but I never thought about sex in a way that could be contemplative or could be meditative. To me, it was always fun. To me, I always compared it to watching TV or to listening to music, a fun pastime, mm -hmm. but never something beyond or deeper than that. So it's just such an interesting way to think about like, it's just a, a, like an accessible way to like return to like a deeper place in yourself. I feel like I've glimpsed it before. I feel like while in the act of having sex, I've like seen that what it could be, the potential for it, but I brushed it away. It's like, oh, that's nothing. That it, it couldn't be that. Mm -hmm. So in a way, by hearing you speak, it unlocks something that I always knew was there, but like never fully like engaged with or trusted with. Beautiful. Have either of you had any like aha moment during sex? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But only with each other. Right. Yeah. Uh, I mean, it always feels like a re I don't know, like something extra spiritual when it comes to us. Beautiful. I'm not into it if it's not. But what revelation you had uh, with your partner? It's hard to put into words maybe, but just, I've known him my whole life since we were five and we have been together on and off for a really long time. And so sex can also be a little bit routine after so many years, but even just like last week, we had a sexual experience and it was like, Oh yeah, like it can still be new and profound and sacred even after a long time too. So I think for us, that's kind of like our challenge now is like continuing to find that and making space and time for that. So, and just like really seeing him as like the beautiful person that he is. I've often thought about sex as something that is a healing force, mm -hmm. some, something that uh, you can bring to somebody else and something that you, that somebody else can help bring to you. Well, I'm also a writer, so I feel like it's a lot of writing stuff comes up when I'm in that state. Yeah. So ideas or stuff, concepts uh, or, or stories? Or, or just like something to, to tie things together. Yeah. Kind so of, so you a lot more like to tie things together, like that one thing I'm missing. The one thing I'm missing. I hadn't thought about it being involved with my lovemaking, but I do think it has something to do with that connection. Absolutely. I've had beautiful sexual experiences, but nothing to that uh, extent. No. All right. So you're going to be employing intentions yeah. and breath work. Yeah. Actually, so my partner and I recently started introducing another person into our relationship. Okay. And my entire life, I have had a construct that being in a marriage meant that you were monogamous and that was the only way that you could be successful. And the fact that we were able to bring somebody else in and it, it totally altered, changed my perspective on what a healthy relationship can look like and what sexual revelation can look like mm. and how the love that my partner and I have together, we can give that to other people and other people can give that to us and it only helps fuel how we are intimate together and how much closer we are we get to go through these experiences I think more I think rather than like practical things that have come up during sex more like emotional gut feelings have come up like this idea of being so close to another human being and like letting go and feeling compassion my girlfriend is very compassionate and I struggle with that a lot she like just loves everybody and like I don't and somehow by being so close to a person like that it's given me more 
ability to see through her eyes in a way, which to me is pretty beautiful to be able to like see from someone else's perspective just by being that close to them. You can't do that from just hugging somebody, I think, but by engaging in such a deep practice, it's definitely opened my eyes up outside of just in bed to like have more compassion for people in general. Maybe those kinds of realizations of uh, safety and love so you've you've received that information mm -hmm. from mm -hmm. uh, a, yeah. a session understanding yeah. safety and love self source. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. mm -hmm. Okay. I think that it's more that like it's in those moments in and around that experience that I'm my mind is the most free to kind of um, come into my philosophy around connection. That space inside of that like safe place and that place where I feel really alive and invigorated often kind of brings me back to my philosophies around how I want to connect with people how. I I want to draw people out and, and be able to capture them as something that's real and authentic and because I'm having that experience with Scott in its most you know beautiful and primitive form it helps open my eyes to understand how I can connect it with that same kind of intention with the people that I work with. Awesome well congratulations and thank you so, thank much, you so much for this feedback and uh, willingness to share so openly and vulnerably. Thank you again so much for you sharing your heart with me. Thank you Aga Thank for you. coming to my workshops and for all the work that you're doing here at Yeah, yeah Field Trip. I just think as a whole I think it's an important conversation to have with people and I think that it's you do a wonderful job and you really represent it as well as having a lot of knowledge around it so keep, keep doing what you're doing. Thank you. Much love.